Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this wonderful day that you have given us. As we continue to share your word and also remind ourselves of your love, that love that you showed by giving your son Jesus Christ. And recently we have been remembering how he, he died on the cross and rose again. We thank you and pray that as we meditate upon those words that you help us to understand, open our minds, and may you continue encouraging us. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I also hope you are keeping well uh, and during these hard times. And it is good to know that the Lord is with us all the time, taking care of us as he has always promised. From the two readings that we have read, you can see they are almost similar. And I'm sure you know the stories, those two beautiful stories. The first one is during the beginning of Jesus' ministry, while the second one comes or it's during when he was about to leave and was handing over uh, his ministry to his disciples. And so I entitled my message, uh, uh, Meeting the Risen Christ, because from that, after I say a few things uh, from the two stories, I want us to, I, I want to bring some few points that we can remind ourselves um, about the risen Christ, Christ and what these stories can remind us in the days that we are in. And in the first story, we know that, or we have read that Jesus had finished speaking to a crowd of people while Simon Peter and his friends were on the other side, washing their nets. And the story tells us that they had caught nothing that night. And it's after Jesus asked Peter to use his boat. He used Peter's boat to speak to the crowd. And then after he had finished speaking to the crowd, he told this tired Peter who with his friends were now washing the nets, please, can you go for uh, 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 into the lake and you will get some fish. And we see that Peter answered that they have worked hard the whole night. They have toiled the whole night. They had got nothing. But he said, the version that I have said that since you say so, I will let it, I will let down the nets. And I, I sense that as an experienced fisherman, Peter was telling Jesus, I, I will let them down, but you'll see we will get nothing. You see, we'll, I, we, I'll do it. You will see. I, I don't know whether you, you have been in such a situation whereby somebody has told you, can you do this? And you know, you know the results. Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. Uh, he was just, he wanted to prove that they are experienced, they have worked the whole night, and they got nothing. Surprisingly, when he got the net in, wow, a lot of fish came out. And, uh, 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 and what is interesting is that during that incident, when they got the fish, the Bible tells us that the nets almost broke down and they had to call their friends uh, to come and help them. And we see there Peter now running to Jesus and kneeling down and telling, get away from me, my Lord, if, 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 you, if you read further. 
And then that is when Peter, uh, Jesus tells Peter, from now, I'll make you fishers, or, 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 or fishers of men. So follow me. I'm going to make you something different. And you know that he, he, he went on and called other disciples and was with them. So between these two stories, there is a gap of almost three years. And now this is towards the, 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 the end of his ministry and his teaching with, uh, or, or, or discipling them. That now, as we, you know, we remember during the Easter period where he was crucified and it was a terrible death. And Peter and his friends were there. And they saw what happened. And now Jesus has risen and they had seen him twice. But it's like true they were in doubt. Because now you see they are back in Galilee. They, they, Jesus died in Jerusalem. And now they went back to Galilee because that is where he had told them to go. And also that was their home. But then they, come, they kind of became impatient and went into the sea. And it was Peter who suggested, I'm going fishing. That is now in the second reading. And the, the rest who were with him, I think they were about seven, they followed him. And you know, when they followed him that night again, they got nothing. And it was when they were there in the morning that Jesus appeared. And when he appeared, uh, he called them friends. There are other, 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 other versions say children. Do you have anything to eat? And that is when they said no. And, and remember this time they did not argue. They just did what he, he told them. Throw your nets. And they caught and, it, and then they, 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 this story tells us that as they were pulling and there were a lot of fish, this time the nets did not break. And it was when one of the disciples whom Jesus loved said, Oh, it's the Lord. And Peter jumped into the water and ran to God, to, to Jesus. So quickly, I, 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 I want to to say this because I, but after I say that when he went there he found a fire and there was also bread on the fire uh, and, and there was fish and bread was there not the fish that they, 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 they had caught but they found there was more fish that was cooking and we can draw some Conclusions, or we can get a few things from this story, because I'm trying to uh, 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 move a bit faster. That when they met a risen Christ, and when we meet risen Christ, Jesus reminds us, or we, he reminds us that he is a promise keeper. Why? Remember when in Luke, in Mark chapter 14, verse 28, when he was telling them, you know, when, when, when the shepherd will be struck, the rest of you will be scattered. And, and, and Peter said, no, 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 I'll never, I'll, I'll never leave you. But then he told them, guys, after that, I'll meet you in Galilee. Even after he resurrected, when the, lady, the, the women went to the tomb, they were told, tell the disciples and even Peter, and also Peter, I'll meet them in Galilee. So for him now to meet them in Galilee, show that he is a promise keeper. Peter and his disciples had ran away. Peter, when, uh, when he was being uh, crucified or even before he was crucified when he was being uh, tried denied after the cock crowed three times he denied Christ so Peter did not keep his promise we don't keep our promise but Jesus keeps 
his promise. Let us remember that, that he always keeps his promise. Whatever he has promised us, it will come to pass. When he tells us he is with us, even at this time, he will keep that promise. And then number two, he, it's a reminder that he's always in control. Remember, in John chapter 1, we are told that he was there. He, the, the, the word was formed. The world, the, 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 the world was created out of his word. He was there when it was created. So he is in control of nature. And that is why even after they had gone for a whole night without getting any fish, he comes and they find fish when he tells them, now go. This is a, 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 a way of telling us that he is in control of all these things. He's in control of nature. Nothing is above him. And also reminds us that he is patient with us. Look at Peter. The number of times he denied him. Remember, he, he's, he's the one who is saying, I will never leave you. Then he leaves Jesus. Remember now, he is in Galilee. And then he, they become impatient and they go to fish. But then Jesus is still there following them. After being with them for three years. And then the last minute they let him down. I was thinking whether it was, if it was a human being, most of us are not that patient, but Jesus is patient with us. So when sometimes we miss it, or when sometimes we feel that we are not really doing according to his will, let us remember when we go back to him, when we run to him, he's always watching over us and he's patient with us. He's ready to forgive us and have us back. And also, he forgives us as, as i have said because peter had denied him but he still uh, forgave him and he calls us and he expects us to keep on following him see what he's telling peter because he wants him if you if you read the story father you will, uh, 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 John Father, you'll see where he, he, he is continuing to tell them, follow me. And even somewhere, Peter asked about John. He said, no, 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 forget about John. It's you, follow. It's an individual call that we keep on following him. It's also remind us that we cannot do without him. We can't do without that. When he calls you, and sometimes you want to do your things without him. Sometimes it is impossible. But when he's around, things are possible. Even if sometimes you don't think, you don't feel like he's around, he is there. But when we try to do things with our own strength, with our own experience, with our own intelligence, sometimes we fail. Or in many cases, we will fail. And particularly when we are doing his work, it's a faith experience. You have to have faith in him. So he is, or rather we, can, we cannot do without him. And we should always involve him in all our plans. And the, 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 the other one I say, even if we don't see him and we don't sense his presence, as I have said, he is still somewhere. I am sure when they were struggling in the sea, he was watching them the whole night. He was watching them struggling. And this is how he watches over us when we are struggling with issues, sometimes trying to do things our own way. He's somewhere watching us. Why are they struggling and I'm here? And then when you give up and come, then he takes over. And what you had struggled with the whole night or many years, within a matter of seconds, it's done. So let's always know he's somewhere. Even if you have struggled with that, uh, uh, whatever issue, he's, if, if you have faith in him, he's somewhere. Just invite him. And lastly, let's remember that, or oh, he reminds us he is ready to meet our needs. See, they had gone for fishing, I, I mean for fish, get nothing. When they come back, they find fire and fish, and they were hungry, and he gave them to eat. 
some of the things that we go looking for. He has them. He has them. And if you read Matthew chapter 8, verse 25, he's saying, don't worry. John 15, whatever we pray for, he will give us. So those who have faith in him, let us know that he has everything for us and we should not worry. Even at this time, when we are locked in our houses, when very little is happening, let us remember that he is a promise keeper, that he was watching over us, that even our needs he is going to meet. And even you children, remember that Jesus is a friend and he's watching over us and he'll take care of those needs. He will help our parents to provide what we need. All we need is to keep on trusting him and let us know that just as he never gave up with Peter, he will never give us, he will never give up with us. Or he's always waiting for us to go to him, to run to him. So never ever come to a time where you think, oh, I have lost it. Oh, I am very far, far away from him. I have messed up. No, he's always calling us to himself because he loves us. All he needs is for us to go and ask for forgiveness. And from there, he will empower us and we will continue with this journey. And he will continue using us because that's why he has called us. So may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. And may he be our Lord and our Savior because he is risen and he is risen. And now he has left the whole burden or the, 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 the great commission to us who are alive today to continue discipling others and bringing others who don't know him so that they may also join the journey. Let's pray. We thank you for your word and we pray, Father, that you help us to understand it and also to continue experiencing a healthy fellowship with you. And when, Lord, we struggle, with issues help us to know that you are not very far away and more at this time when life has come almost to a standstill and there could be loneliness there could be many questions there could be some who are not healthy how we pray father that just as you have reminded us you are ever ready to help us and you are a promise keeper so may you provide where provision is needed. May you heal where healing is needed. May you encourage where encouragement is needed. And may you support where they need support. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray and believe.